Hey guys, Justin here from Tin Man Electronics. I came up with a really good idea. I want to reverse engineer a very simple board I have. I have here a broken servo motor. I broke it during my final project when I was in college. And uh, it's, it's fried. You can even see which chips on this board are dead. And I just want to take a quick look at how to uh, just simply reverse engineer this um, the right way. Uh, you guys will see this. I think I'm going to split this up in a multiple part series. This first part will be about servo motors and their mechanical assembly, their operation possibly, but I'm going to crack one open. I've got another servo just like this broken one that is functioning and uh, I'll take a look inside. We'll look at the gears, the potentiometer, the si simple single little board it's got in there and how it's kind of all coupled together in a neat little package and let's take a look at it. It's actually still on the robot arm for my final project in college and I'm gonna have to actually take apart my sweet sweet robot just so I can make a video for you guys. So let's get right into it. And that's the robot arm I'm taking apart so I'm just gonna just kind of move it for reference here. It kind of just moves around. Uh, I haven't touched this in maybe a couple months, so I think the servo I'm taking is this guy. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to show you guys what's inside. So that is a small servo motor. I don't know the exact specs, except it is a standard high-tech servo. It is, uh, you can see the part number, HS645MG ultra torque, carbonite gears, or metal gears. Yeah, I think MG is for metal gears. So this is a, is a, it's actually a really good servo. It served us well in our final project. And I'm just gonna open up, pop open the back. It's gonna be greasy in there, all lubricated with grease uh, for the bushings and whatever, the bearings and the gears. And it's very simple. I think it's a two gear or three gear system. Okay, I think these, screws are actually stripped or I'm being stupid and using the wrong bit. Uh, come on baby. Okay, that's good. We got one. And these are irreparably stripped so I'm gonna have to grind these bad boys down. No doubt, don't forget your eye protection when using the Dremel. This is this could get pretty iffy. No, no, you know this one. This one's just not gonna open. This was a very, very poorly designed robotic arm. Uh, it's just, it's a beginner set. I mean, every every joint has its own servo. That is not a, a necessarily good design. You want to, to have something that is articulated where all the servos are probably at the base and uh, everything has a nice mechanical assembly that does all the work for you. But if you are building your own servo, motor driven arm, then uh, yeah, no, this is a very simple way to do it. It's not the most effective because then every, every joint has to carry the weight of the next uh, of all the following parts. And that's one of the problems our servo had is that it was kind of weak in that way. Like you would extend it out, you would extend it out completely. Let's see if I could even get this on camera. No, I can't. Yes, I can. Uh, the, the, the whole arm extends out completely and it's, it's kind of shaking a bit because the arm is trying to compensate. The PID controller inside every single servo motor is compensating for the weight of the arm and it's just shaking. It was kind of funny to see actually. There you go. That's a servo motor. It's a lot bigger than the other one I was going to open, but I didn't screw this one up. So, whoa, whoa, check that out. The whole length of the servo. How was I going to drill this out of the other servo motor? I'm going to have to give away my other servo motor. So if someone wants it, uh, you uh, comment in the YouTube video. I am going to have to get rid of this servo unless I find a use for it. This one right here. I am not going to be able to drill out and uh, open this one up. So if someone just wants a free servo motor, let me know. 
Man, there is one heck of a mess. But there she is. Look at that. That is a servo motor controller board. And let's see if I can actually pull this out. I don't want to break anything. Oh, there's like this little little gasket probably for uh, if anything explodes in there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Get right in there, pry it open. This thing should just pop off. But I have a bad feeling that it isn't. Oh right, the front actually comes off too. And there, there's the mechanical assembly of the servo. So if I just put that back on non-destructively, you could see that the output shaft is right here. And I think the actual motor, ah oh crap, I'm making a mess, is gonna be right here. But look at that, it's it's all geared inside there. The one I opened up a long time ago, the, the broken one that we will be taking a look at, a, actually is a lot simpler than this, I believe. This has a couple more gears, probably adding more mechanical stability. A lot of these are plastic, but uh, I'm just taking a look for which one is actually metal. This one, there's a bearing right here. This might be the motor. All right, so I had trouble opening this one too. Come on. But let me use the best of three worlds, okay? I've got an actual fully uh, composed servo. I have the broken one, which I will be um, reverse engineering. And I have the one that I just took apart. But you see there's uh, these massive terminals right over here. And uh, these are actually soldered, I think, directly to the motor. But I'm hoping you guys could still follow along. Uh, the, the electronics might be slightly different than the broken one here. The smaller one is very simple. And uh, this bigger one might not be that far off. So let's open it up and let me explain what actually occurs in here. Is Let's pretend we've got inside this servo here, we got this, this assembly, okay? We have the motor, which is right here. And you could see that because it, there's actually, you can see the golden kind of copper kind of plated or brass um, output shaft of just like a, a brushed DC motor. And that goes to a little gear. And this one starts turning this gear assembly that eventually moves the servo horn, which is the actual servo position. Now, the way that the servo could actually decide, you know, where it's pointing and stuff is a little potentiometer and that's the black thing on this broken servo I have. And so like I showed, let's say your servo is mounted like this on the inside. Well, this, this little nub in here, that's, this is actually a potentiometer and I could actually, I could actually get some pliers and, and turn this. And I could feel there's a limit. It's got about, I don't know, 160 degrees of, uh, of movement. And I'm just gonna set it back to the center so that I could assemble the servo back together. But when this goes on, you could see that the potentiometer has this little white plastic part. And on our the, the top assembly, the top mechanical assembly of the servo connected to the servo horn, there's the same shape of this little plastic part inside. And that is right there. And so when you put these pieces together, this potentiometer is mechanically coupled to the servo horn. And so this is how the servo is getting feedback from this mechanical assembly is that when you put this together, you've got your signal line coming in. And then whatever the microcontroller or the, the circuit, the analog circuit inside, you know, compares it to the potentiometer voltage because they just basically use the potentiometer. It's linear from zero to 160 degrees or whatever it is. And it just takes in that voltage, compares it to what you want coming in on this, uh, this signal line and it will reposition accordingly. So let me put this back together. I hope you've got enough of that mechanical assembly. I could turn the the, the servo horn and it moves some gears in there. But uh, not all the gears move because they don't all move until 
I put it all back together. So it goes back like this. I'm making sure to align the potentiometer with the servo horn shaft, which is our main output. <laughs> I don't even know if that's on. It's not moving. No, that's stiff. So, so I'm not doing it right on the wrong side of town. You're doing it wrong on the right side of town. There you go. I got it. It's moving freely. Everything is clamped down perfect perfectly. All I need to do is put on the back uh, case, which is right here. Put in the screws and I am good to close this up. I hope you guys got enough from inside that servo and are ready to move on to more interesting servo aspects. Although the mechanical stuff is pretty cool and I do like mechanical design myself. I am an electronic technologist, so that is not my domain. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I just went over the mechanical details of the servo motors. Next episode or next part of this little mini series on servo motors, I'm going to go over the circuit behind it. Maybe a little, maybe I'll make a little uh, servo test circuit, servo controller style. I'll show you the electronics that uh, are found on this board. And what else do I got? There's a lot of standards associated. Actually, no, that's not true. There's, there's just a couple of little standards associated with servo motors, like pinout, electrical characteristics, like signal that you're putting it in. And uh, then I'll kind of explain some of that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thumbs up if you like the episode because uh, it really helps with the Google Analytics and the, uh, the search engine kind of stuff. I have a Twitter. You could add me at Justin Tinman. I have a website at www.tinmanelectronics.com. Subscribe to my channel. Enjoy it. I don't care. Uh, but please share. That's engineering.